The motorsports world is where legends are made. The unthinkable happens and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor with Jim Beaver. Boy, do we have a big one for you this week right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hank, try it. Strap in. It is going to be one hell of a show today. Banger, even. We are going to throw out the word banger. Yes, it's going to be a banger of a show. I was also racing this past weekend at the Best in the Desert Parker 250. We'll dive into that and uh, a whole lot more. But let me tell you about this little guest list we've got, because it's not little. It is big. We've got my good friend Steve Arp, and yes, one of the baddest rallycross drivers on the planet. He was actually at Bristol Motor Speedway, the first guy to touch the dirt in a race car since they've covered the entire uh, Coliseum there in Bristol in dirt. He's going to talk about that, his 2021 plans, and a whole lot more. And he's also a good friend of mine, so who knows where the hell this conversation is going to go. But yes, Steve Arpin on the show. We've also got my Polaris Razor teammate, Mitch Guthrie Jr., Yes, Mitch Guthrie Jr. walking away with a massive win at the Parker 250. Started dead last in class, battled all the way through, took home the victory in his Polaris Razor. He's going to be on the show this week. And then we've also got Supercross rider in the 450 division, Mac A- Max Ancy. He is going to be on the show this week talking about moving from Europe to the United States, uh, his debut in the 450 class in Supercross and a whole lot more. So, man. Three massive guests, all killer, no filler, right here on the show. These are the shows you like. This is why you listen to this show. And let me tell you, we are bringing it today, bringing the heat. Um, Not only that, but uh, we got, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll get some fan questions. Maybe we'll be able to cycle those in. We got some massive news in the world of motorsports. I mean, all over the country, we got news dropping. Boom, boom, boom. You know, so uh, we're definitely going to uh, dive into a lot of the news. We'll see if I can get get all the headlines in. I can't promise you on that because, uh, yeah. It is a big, big show today, but if you've got a headline you want me to chime in on, you got something you want me to talk about, you have something that you just think needs to be said on the show today, please hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on the Twitter machine, and uh, when you hit me up with that, I will get that question answered in the show. I promise you, hit me up on social or at Jim Beaver 15. I'll check my DMs on Instagram uh, during the show as well, but uh, yes, hit me up. Those two places will get the question in the show, but man, it is a big show today. I love shows like this. All killer, no filler, right here. Two hours coming at you here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor Strap In. It's going to be one hell of a ride. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all new G Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. From the 2018 Master Distillers of the Year comes a bold new American whiskey in this full of bourbon. 
Their whiskeys have been award-winning for generations. Now they're going all in on bourbon, blending five straight whiskeys to create a big balanced bourbon that stands apart from everything else. So grab yourself a fistful of bourbon, a blend of five bourbons created with over a hundred years of whiskey blending experience. It ain't just a bourbon, it's a damn fistful. Please enjoy responsibly. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. All right, time to uh, get rolling here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Thanks to all you guys for uh, tuning in. Keep it in the dial. Tune in here, whether you're tuned in on... Uh, American Forces Network, Sirius XM, Sports Byline, Podcast One, DownAndDirtyShow.com, wherever you're tuning in. Yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it. And, um, yeah, you keep us in business. Ten years running. Yes, ten years. This is uh, year number ten of the show. And uh, much appreciated for all of you guys for for keeping us here. And, uh, yeah, that being said, ah, man, we got a lot to talk about today. We've got a new short course series to talk about. We've got uh, – uh, some big news coming out of the Midwest Short Course Series. Um, we've got uh, also, obviously, iRace this weekend. And, um, yeah, we'll just kind of get rolling, see where things are headed. But, uh, uh, yeah, that being said, I guess I did race this weekend. Parker 250, man, let me tell you a little bit about my race. Um, brand new car. This is Mitch Guthrie Jr.'s car from last year. This car has won a championship, finished third in the championship, and something like six, seven wins in two years. I, I don't know, but it's never not finished a race. You want to talk about some pressure on my shoulders? Yeah, I had it going into this weekend. Like the fastest car, this and that. You know, got to finish the race. All right, where are we at, you know? Um, so we get rolling there, and, uh, man, I felt good. Testing, everything was good. If you haven't already, go and check out our videos we drop with Mad Media. Amazing stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a wild, wild one. Uh, you know, we, we started mid pack and, uh, boom, first lap. I think we had the third fastest lap. We were then like a minute of the leader, um, after 62 miles, a great run. Uh, we passed like half the field, um, you know, because we started mid pack. We were running right there towards the front. Uh, had a mechanical on the second lap, man, wind out of the sails. We were uh, looking for a W looking for the win, limped it to the pit, got it fixed. Boom. All the way towards the back of the pack fight all the way through finish line we ended up seventh in class so uh yes uh was it the result we wanted no i wanted to win but uh man i gotta tell you um it was a solid finish we know this car can win we're gonna win this year in this car and uh man what a uh what an exciting exciting race it was great to get to the finish line but um man it was uh it was good to just be on on rails for once in a just lightning quick polaris razor race car uh, you know, a lot of support from you guys. We got some banger photos and videos, some helicopter footage to drop here uh, soon. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for content from us in regards to the race, uh, that is coming. I promise. I know a lot of people are wanting wins the next race. Well, I got a lot of projects going on right now, and we're not actually running for a points championship, so I'm going to miss the next best in the desert race. But that doesn't mean I'm uh, not racing again soon. We've got uh, Silver State, and then I'm going to run the Legacy Baja Nevada race. So uh, we got two races coming up um, here uh, here in the next uh, next couple of months. So uh, yeah, th- that's going to be big. Also going up to Dirt Fish for uh, for some rally sliding and, and driving, and uh, so that's going to be fun as well. So uh, my calendar is going to be stacked. Also going to be at Bristol Motor Speedway, Supercross in Texas. I got a lot of traveling to do. So uh, yes, if you follow me on social media, um, you are going to see a ton of good stuff uh, coming coming really really soon uh out of us because uh yeah that's what we do right we're a media company um that being said being a media company uh we've got some amazing uh partners in the show and support for the down and dirty radio show is brought to you by manscaped who's the best in men's below the waist grooming big news manscaped just released their new cologne scent to help you feel good and smell good all at all times who knew smelling is good could feel this good too manscaped's trusted by over two million men worldwide including me join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs and to smell good, right? Everyone that knows Manscaped has the perfect package 3.0 for all your below-the-waist grooming needs, but 
They didn't stop there. Complete your grooming game with a new refined clone signature scent by Manscaped. With the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas, this cologne is a perfect complement to the collection. Light, approachable, and gentlemanly. I know most of you listeners here, you're not gentlemen, but uh, yeah, this will uh, masquerade as one in all the right ways. Think of it as your wingman for the night. Keep you fresh and ready for anything. Also be sure and check out that perfect package 3.0 with all the essentials for below the waist grooming needs, including the lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, crop and crop formulations. Yes, talking about ball deodorant and toner to keep downstairs locked and loaded. And now you can use the new Manscaped Refined Cologne to complete your set and smell great anytime, anywhere. You know how you do this? You get 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver. That is Jim Beaver, my name, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using the code Jim Beaver. Look good, smell good, feel good with Manscaped. Jim Beaver, manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping. And uh, thanks, Manscaped, for uh, continued support of the show. So, yes, we, uh, we have a new short course series it is called Great American Short Course. They're using uh, the acronym GAS um, for short. Um, you know, it is, uh, it's a, I guess, a kind of a joint collaboration with the Povorti family. We know them. Uh, Chris has been a guest on the show before. Um, but the Povorti family, who uh, he runs a pro light, he's building a 6100. Uh, Dave Cole from King of the Hammers and Ultra 4. And Lee Perfect, who ran the Lucas Oil Regional Series. So the three of them got together. They created this uh, this new short course series. Um, a lot of people are wondering what's you know how's it going to be, what's going on, um, you know who's going to drive. I can't tell you the drivers yet. I do think uh, you know do I think it's going to be as big as uh, what's happening in the Midwest? No, but I do think it's going to be uh, good for uh, a lot of the West Coast regional type racers who uh, need a home and can't drive halfway across the country. So Great American Short Course has been launched. I guess they've got a live streaming package. It'll be the same one that Ultra Four uses, um, but uh, looking. Uh, at the bigger picture, everybody wondered what these races are going to look like. So they've tried to avoid the Midwest short course calendar completely, which I, I applaud. So they finally announced their calendar. They got a couple of races before Midwest starts. One is going to be in Victorville, California. I am not familiar with that track. And uh, then they're going to have one at Glen Helen. So they're going to have two races to start the season this spring before things get hot out here on the West Coast. Then everybody's going to shift gears, go to the Midwest for um, the Champ, Champ Off-Road Series, and then turn around after Champ Off-Road wraps. Great American Short Course, a.k.a. Gas, is going to have two more events, one being in Reno and one being at Glen Helen to uh, wrap things up. So, uh, yes, four total races. Well, actually, those are both uh, both two-round weekends, so it's going to be eight race series over four weekends. They're going to have a live streaming package um, you know, wishing them the best of luck. It's been a tough go for short course fans and uh, short course series here on the West Coast, but they've got some great people involved. The calendar is out, and uh, we will see uh, see what happens. Then, bigger news coming out of uh, the Midwest. They have inked a television package with CBS Sports for the Championship Off-Road Series. So, and, you know, that's big news. Champ Off-Road, obviously, through their uh, ISOC, uh, the parent company uh, who handles Snowcross. They have a great relationship with CBS Sports. Uh, it was only a matter of time, I think, before this uh, deal got inked. It's going to be great for short course. Um, you know, obviously, we just aired our uh, e-short course event on CBS Sports. Great group of people over there. Phenomenal network. Uh, great to have short course racing back on TV. Let's hope it's not delayed six weeks like Lucas was. Let's hope it's more of a couple-week delay. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know in regards to that. But, uh, yes, uh, it is definitely good stuff. Championship off-road. Uh, got some great stuff going in the Midwest. We thought we only had a single series. That lasted for, what, uh, all of about three months, and then boom, back. Short Course Wars back again. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad for the industry, but uh, we'll be here to talk about it each and every week, and we're going to support both of them one way or another. So, uh, yes, uh, you know, those were some of the big headlines coming out of uh, the world of off-road. Um, obviously, uh, we got some big events coming up, Easter Jeep Safari. I know a vendor show was canceled. Now they've got kind of a different one. I was actually looking forward to going to Moab, but uh, not going to happen uh, this year, um, well, at least for uh, EJS. But uh, um, San Felipe, I know a lot of people have been worried about San Felipe, another major desert race. Sounds like it is a go. Not going to have like a vendor area and stuff down on the Malacon, though. I guess it's going to be all kind of remote. And uh, But the race is happening, so big stuff out of uh, – 
score in San Felipe that it is still a go. So, I don't know, lots going on in the world of off-road, but uh, we are going to uh, take a short commercial break. When we return, it's going to be my good friend Steve Arpin on the show right here for probably a couple segments on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets a standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, along with my very good friend, uh, Mr. Steve Arpin. Steve, what is happening, buddy? Oh, well, too much, my friend, too much. We've uh, we've been busy lately, but that's a good problem to have, especially these days. Yeah, I think last year uh, we were so unbusy it was kind of ridiculous. So I'm I'm stoked that all of us are busy. I mean, uh, yeah, I feel like racing is back. I mean, obviously we got there's a few slight changes, you know, and and there's a, still a little bit lingering, but I feel like we're we're getting pretty close. We're almost there, Steve. <laughs> Honestly, it was like all those all those days that we had last year when we were stuck in quarantine and sitting down. And I like, honestly, it was to the point I literally got my wife a trophy for being able to survive quarantine with me because that that in itself is a, is an accomplishment. But uh, for all those days that we sat around and, and just did nothing, we, we it seems like we're making up for it. We're constantly on the road and, and have so much to do this year with with everything taken back off. So it, it's awesome to see just motorsports in general uh, across all disciplines and everything and, and life as. Uh, it's not necessarily life as we knew it, but but what life is going to be is starting to kind of shape up and, and, and move forward. So that's an awesome, awesome thing to see happening. Yeah, well, I know we've got uh, we got a lot to talk about here. I do want to do want to mention, though, I mean, last year, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, you are no longer just Canadian. You're here. wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. Let's, let's just stop right there. <laughs> All rumors are false. All rumors <laughs> are kidding. false. But no, you you're a dual citizen now, correct? I am. I am. I That's actually, a big deal. We, we, we wanted to see we wanted to see if there was any limits on, on which the, the 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 US would draw the line and I have not like they actually accepted me. So so we thought we thought we'd uh we'd do that, but no, it's uh it, it's just a true honor. This this country has given me so much over the years and and to be able to to be able to, to have the opportunity to vote and to have the opportunity to to, to call this place home that I've, that I've, I, I, I've, it's given me so much throughout the years. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. So to, to go through that and, and get that done was, it was a, a big point in my life. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you about the process. We're, we're going to go down a rabbit hole here. I promise we'll talk racing people, but this is, I, I truly, <laughs> I truly want to know this because there, there's a lot of people. I've got a lot of friends that are Canadian and, and European. They, they moved to the U S they live here. They work here. They love the country. You know what I mean. But they they never uh, you know they never go through to the level you did where you actually become a citizen. Some of them live here for their entire lives and they they just never become a citizen. I mean, I guess what triggered you to do it one and two? How was that process once you decided? Because it's not something where you go, oh, I want to be a citizen, and you go and just sign your name on something and you become a citizen. There's a process to this, man honestly there, there isn't it, it it was it's a it's a good process and it was i'm not gonna lie it was intimidating so as far as what what triggered me to do it um I, i'm one of those guys that i, I firmly believe if uh, you you can't you can't complain about something you can't complain in unless you want to kind of offer a offer a solution 
and I have everyone has their own political views, everyone has that, and and that's what's so great about this country. But I figured from my aspect, it's like if I'm not actually going to do my part when I do have the opportunity, it just takes a little bit of work to 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 voice my opinion amongst friends and everything. Then I just need to shut my mouth. So I just decided that I like if I want to have an opinion, I need to be able to vote and. If I want to be able to vote, I need to go through the process to be able to do it. And so so I did it. And But the process, I'll tell you what, it was actually kind of intimidating. So there's a lot of studying to do. you got to go through a full history test and everything, which was really, it was a lot of fun because, like, and my wife was going through it. She's like, how do you not know this? How do you not know this? It's like, because when I was in school, I got taught Canadian history, not American history, right? So, but then when we got up there for the interview and everything, they, they called my number. I was at number 83, actually. And they told me to go to the elevators and go to the second floor. And Jim, I tell you what, it was like a scene off Men in Black. And the elevator doors open, and there is a guy with, like, the flowy 70s haircut. Like, he had the, <laughs> and the big old mustache and everything. Standing there in a suit, like, perfect posture, hands behind his back. And the elevator doors open, and he says, 83? I'm like, yep, that's me. He says, follow me. And then we walked down this long white hallway. It was just pure white. And we're walking by all these offices and there's those people sitting in their offices. Like it's absolutely quiet, not a sound in the world. I think they do this to try and intimidate you to actually understand what's going to happen and and trick you in the meeting to to make you uncomfortable. But it was, it was literally like that scene in men in black where they're walking around (laughs) and I guess I was the alien in in, in this case, literally. literally, (laughs) I guess you kind of were. So (laughs) I guess I kind of was at that point, but it was, it was, it was really neat. And then we got through the process, did the history test and everything. I passed. It was awesome. It was, uh, it it was a thorough process. It was challenging, but I'm also really appreciative of, of, of the, the work they made you go through. Because it genuinely made the end result more rewarding, right? You're actually yeah. understanding, getting a genuine feel for the history and what took place to get this country to where it is today. It, it just made it that much more. It made you appreciate it that much more when it was all said and done. Yeah, and I had a Hispanic friend, uh, and we're talking 15 years ago at this point. He went through the process, and I never really quizzed him on it, and he's, he's since passed. So that's kind of why I'm quizzing you on it. But he... Uh, I remember bits and pieces, but he was telling me about that test and like he was saying some of the questions and I'm like, this is stuff a lot of kids in high school that graduate high school can't answer on American history. Like it's not an easy history test, dude. You have to do some studying, right? You have to do some study. And the part where I got screwed up, I I could have sworn to God it was going to be a multiple choice and I'd have like a tablet or something. He just verbally asked me questions, and I had to give him the answer. It wasn't multiple choice. He didn't give me, he didn't give me options. It was like he just sat there in the most monotone, dry voice in the world. It's like, who was the sixth president of the United States of America? And it's like, oh my God, like I, this is. I thought it was multiple choice. All my practice questions were multiple choice. So that kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, that that would be that would be trippy. Have to shoot from the hip and know. Yeah, normally you can see a multiple choice and kind of narrow it down and be like, oh yeah, I know the answer. But not having any options and just having to spit it, uh, spit it out like that would uh, that definitely adds an extra. And the level. most intimidating man ever asking you the questions. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and the other side of it is when I sat down, he threw down like a three-inch thick file on me. I'm like, is that all on me? He says, Yes, it is. And that's it. It's like, oh, wow. I don't have that much information on me. Uh, it makes you wonder, what what do you have on me? What, what's in there? You know, like. Uh, right? Yeah. That, that time when I was 21 and drinking beer and uh, got a little rowdy in the bar, is that in there? You know, like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, well, dude, congratulations on that. I do. I did want to, I guess, uh, open this thing up with that just because I knew you wouldn't have brought it up. But to me, that's a that's a really big freaking deal. And I think it's amazing that you went through the process. And I know, I mean, you love flying that Canadian flag as well. So I think it's it's kind of rad that now you get to fly two flags, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's an honor not many people get to do. So just like racing a race car for a living, it's, it's something that, that not many people get to actually drive race cars for a living. So it's one of those things where I'm just truly just 
feel blessed for how fortunate I am both on that aspect and I still get to drive race cars for a living every day, so that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, we have what I call no job jobs where we actually have a job that I don't consider <laughs> a job. But that being said, last year we were both wondering if we had jobs when COVID hit, man. Um, you guys and Lo and Bro completely – you know, my business model changed from my race program and media company, and you and I are very close friends, and obviously you went racing at Vegas Torino with me last year because you were kind of sitting on your hands and didn't have a whole hell of a lot to do, but your guys' program completely changed. I mean, you went from one of the top rallycross programs in the world, which you still are, but now you've got a full dirt modified program going back to your roots i mean kind of tell us about how everything changed at low and bro man because you guys have had a 12-month stretch that i mean if you if you go back to february of last year you never would have thought you'd be in this position today <laughs> yeah and, and honestly it's one of those things where where it forced us to to take a step back and and look at what we're doing and and diversify outside of just rallycross um, so like last year, for example, we, we did not race a single rally cross race. Like our, our entire series fell victim to COVID and, and I'm not, I'm not pouting or whining about it because there's a lot of people that lost a lot worth more and worse stuff than, than we did. So, but with that, we, we've got a, got a lot of mouths to feed here and a lot of responsibilities to people that have dedicated so much to our race team. So from an employee standpoint, so we really, really worked at diversifying out and, and one of the things that like it with with everything being canceled it actually it, it hurt our sponsorship stuff too so like when when we have nothing to deliver to our sponsors it, it made it tough and we kind of had to start 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 over from that aspect too um and and start building stuff back up so but yeah so we i've always wanted to do dirt modifieds I, it was just a matter of time till i got back into it and we still have our rally cross program building that up we're actually Nitro Rally Cross. I think it might be getting launched officially this week, but we have our schedule starting the end of September. We're going to run five races at the end of this year, and then roll into a full 2022 schedule starting next year. But uh, on the dirt modified side of things, it was one of those deals where it's like I was always going to get back into it, and then the 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 people sitting around the table with Longhorn and uh, the Paul and John Leach from Lone Bro and, and their passion for dirt racing. And they have the Electric City Speedway out there in Montana. And then our, our partners at Bilstein and, and everything they're doing and the technical support that they provide and my passion for it and all that. It was like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. When you get this group of people sitting around the table, I don't care what you're going after. You have to capitalize on it. So and that's been just such a successful program already out of the gate, and we're gonna we're gonna grow that into great things in the future. Yeah, how how fun is it to be back behind the wheel on the dirt track, man? I know you kind of dabbled with it the last couple of years, doing a little bit here and there, kind of kind of fill in type stuff, you know, when you could. But you know, how is it having your own program? I mean, I know rallycross is your thing too, but I mean, it's got to scratch a big itch, man. Oh, it's it, it's everything. It, it's absolutely everything. It just it's like the most revitalizing thing in the world um, just to to be able to do this and make sense of it. I'm, I'm the cheapest guy in the world. So, so to, to have a, to, to have a, a super expensive hobby for me, was just something that's just way down the road for, for, for me financially. So to be able to have the opportunity to turn this back into a business and incorporate this into what we're doing here at Lumber Motorsports is, is a dream come true. Uh, something that I, like you said, last February, I never would have seen this here. And we'll be back with more with Steve Arpin right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, when we return. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. 
Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here along with my good friend Steve Arp. And Steve, you know, we were talking before the break, you know, and, and all this stuff's going on. Pandemic's here. Uh, you know, last year, and a lot of people losing sponsors, races are getting shut down, partnerships are dissolving, and, and just because <coughs> brands didn't have any income, there was no events. I mean, it was just tough for motorsports. And for guys like you and I that I consider blue-collar racers, where we've got to find that funding to go race and, you know what I mean, and, and basically pay our mortgage every month, it got <coughs> tougher. But in this whole process, man, you guys were able to uh, secure a new partnership with uh, with Hemp Fusion. And, and I, I think this is kind of one of those really rad situations, Steve, where a lot of people, you know, form partnerships for one reason or another. But this is a partnership with a brand that you and, and I know you said your wife actually use in your day-to-day -day lives so it's it seems like a great mesh and fit with your race program man tell us a little bit about it honestly it's it's something that it's like there's always good that comes out of every situation right and having 2020 that we basically had to sit back and and just reevaluate things it gave us time to really kind of research the industry and try and figure out what actually works for our family and our everyday lives and then, like our, our race team uh, over the last couple of years, another way that we diversified was creating a creating a, a CBD extraction facility uh, under our under our team umbrella. So so we have that aspect of our business too. So when we're looking at things, my wife has my wife has a severe gluten allergy uh, that that affects our day to day lives. It affects every single meal we eat. And and as we're getting older, uh, we really need to look at, at at being healthy, and we want to start a family and everything. So, so the probiotic probiotics uh, is something that we've been using anyways. And she is such an organic lover; so everything for her has to be organic. So when we got looking at this and the relationship with hemp fusion and probiotic probiotics, it was just one of those one of those brands that absolutely checked all the boxes for what we need in our family. Um, I have a lot on my plate uh, from uh, from the business aspect, keeping everything going, um, and, and I'm wore out. I'm stressed out. I, I, I struggle sleeping, and Hemp Fusion's products genuinely help me in every aspect of, of my life. There, uh, stress management and helping me sleep with all natural ingredients, and the Probolin stuff is just so perfect for my wife and helping her just 
just the whole her whole digestive system. So, and then with the extraction facility we have, it was just one of those one of those things where once we made the phone call to get the relationship going, um, everyone over there at Hem Fusion, they're just genuinely good people. They have incredible product. The the first and and the the absolute main priority is quality of product first, and then everything else has to fall in line after that. And it was just it, it just a, a relationship that evolved so fast because we just we, we checked each other's boxes and everything we were doing. And I am just absolutely loving the products. We had everything down there at uh, at Volusia with us, and our buddy Roger in the Bilstein trailer. He has he has tough shoulders and everything with our arthritis. So we brought him a bunch of the topicals and everything over there, and the menthol and everything with the with the uh, with the CBD. And it was it just helped him so much building our shocks for us with Bilstein. And it was just it's one of those partnerships that. It just touches so many people in their everyday lives, and there's so many. Just if you want to improve the overall wellness of your everyday life, it's one of those partnerships that that helps so many people. So it's just so awesome to to be able to partner to be partnered with a brand like Confusion. Yeah, what one of the things I don't think people realize too is, uh, you know, guys like you and I, we're both race car drivers, right? And you know, but that's such a small part of what we do. And I, and when I and I think the motorsports lifestyle, the lifestyle you and I live, it's grueling, man. I mean, it, and and I'm not just talking behind the wheel. I mean, you know, I, I race. You know, I just raced last week, and I was beat up for you know five hours in the race car, but. You know, you leave that, and I'm looking at my schedule in the next couple months. It's, all right, get up at 3 a.m. to catch a 5.30 a.m. flight, and uh, you know what I mean? And then you're flying, and then it's like two days later, it's like i got to stretch where I'm going to be gone for seven days, and I have like four flights, you know, to, to like five different cities and, and all this other stuff. And it's like, dude, like health, when you're in the motorsports world, and, and I call it the traveling circus, I mean, it's so important because it's so easy to get run down. And I think finding the right products, man, it's once you do that, it helps everything out so much just because it is such a draining and stress filled industry. It's so funny because I was talking to my wife yesterday. It's like, it's like, am, am I just getting that much older? Like, I, I'm not recovering as fast as I used to, right? Just naturally. And it's like, and, and that's where, that's where for me, like you said, it's like driving, driving cars is, is probably 2% of, of, of the time of what we do. And the business aspect of it, the other 98%. And it's we're the same thing. We got back at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning from testing in Bristol this week and have to jump right back into work the next day because we got so much on our plate to get things going. And and having having just hemp fusion products to help me recover, to help keep me keep me mentally focused is is something that's been that's been uh it's a combination of both. I'm getting older, so I'm not naturally recovering faster. <laughs> don't today, age us, Steve. Don't age us. We've got a lot more, right? So we got a lot more going on as well, and it's just it 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 just helps kind of manage all that. So it's uh it's I'll tell you what, it's something that's that's kind of been incorporated into my life over the last couple of years, and and it's something that going forward will be a, a permanent fixture in in both of our everyday lives. Yeah, it is funny because uh, you talk about age, and I'm like, don't age us. But I, yeah, I just turned 40 this year. Uh, listeners know this, but um, <laughs> it, it was kind of one of those things. Like, I don't feel 40. My mind, I guarantee you, is still a 25 year old. Uh, I still do things a 25 year old does. I'm still at the skate park all the time and things like that. But I start laughing because I look around, and you know what I mean. And I look at the guys like we've been friends for you know a decade now. But I look at some of the guys you know like that I consider friends: Ken Block, Travis Pastrana, Brian Deegan yourself like i start looking i'm like we're all still acting like we did but man i i know the ages and and you and i are on the young side compared to some of these boys steve and i'm looking at it going yeah i'm like man like this is kind of kind of weird like we've done something right that we're all still active though as we age out because you know major league baseball or something like that or basketball yeah or football especially dude we would have been done like long time ago you know oh uh, isn't that the truth uh, that is so true so. so I don't understand how I don't understand how Travis does. It. I've I, I've got to spend a lot of time with Travis, and that man, that man is he he's just a, a freak of nature. I, I don't understand how he keeps the schedule, the pace, the everything he does. It's pretty pretty incredible. 
Yeah, and I, I truthfully, I think he's in such good shape, not because he's in the gym all the time, but just because the dudes run ragged. Like, <laughs> exactly. I don't know, man. He's he's nonstop, that's for sure. But uh, you mentioned something as we're talking about us getting back late from Bristol. I want to key in on this because Bristol, this is a big deal. They're covering it with dirt this year. Obviously, we know NASCAR is going to be there. You're actually going to be racing there. You're one of the first people in the country to uh, have a race car on the dirt track. I'm lucky that I'm actually flying back there to uh, hang out with you and watch one of your races at Bristol. But, dude, tell us how this was. I mean, this is one of the most iconic tracks, I don't even want to say in the United States. I would say in the world. I mean, you ask people in Europe and about NASCAR tracks and Daytona and probably Bristol comes up just because it's it's like an arena, man. It's a slugfest there. I know you've raced rallycross cars there in the past. Have you raced? Did you race Xfinity cars there? I I, I don't know the that. Did you race Xfinity? I, yeah, I never got to. I never got to go there in the NASCAR, but I, I raced rally cross cars there. Spent a lot of time there with NASCAR teams. I just didn't happen to be the driver in the seat at those at those events. But running around there, honestly, running around that place in in a dirt modified was it was it, it's a coliseum. It's like yeah. who I, like you literally run around there and you feel like you feel like you're a freaking gladiator or something like that, pulling onto the racetrack, looking up, seeing the grandstand surrounding the entire facility. Like you are in a bowl of, of a stadium. And, and it's like, I think they call it the last great Coliseum and it genuinely feels like that going around there. So what they're doing with, with putting the dirt on the racetrack, obviously bringing NASCAR cup series to the dirt this year, it's going to be incredible. Um, But giving so many grassroots dirt racers, the opportunity to go there and just be a part of, of what they're doing. And so many people that race just in local dirt track every Saturday night, giving them the opportunity to, to go run around such an iconic facility, I think is just one of the coolest things in the world. So we went around there at the modified. I was telling the guys like, it's like we're 800 horsepower, 750, 800 horsepower in these things. And I was wide open the whole way around. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like it was, you want to talk about pucker factor getting into those corners it, that, that that was real that was absolutely real going into a, a 20 degree bank corner absolutely wide open at probably 120 130 mile an hour and not lifting it's honestly the the one thing i want to do and i got to talk to them about this because i just think it would be so cool is take our rally cross car out there and that all-wheel drive the, those things are so the, we all know what how a rally cross car performs put yokohamas on that thing and go out there and see what that thing would do running around that racetrack, I think that would be so cool. Yeah, I know uh, Kurt LeDuc, uh, off-road legend, he, at one point, um, he was good friends with uh, Corey Cruzman, and he took a uh, he took a Pro 4 truck to, uh, I think it was like a third mile or a half mile um, dirt uh, dirt oval, and uh, and he did actually in between the sprint car races, he, they, he just took it out there to see what would happen, and the fans went nuts, but Pro 4 was amazing around there, and Truthfully, I think a rally cross car would be uh, would be pretty badass, also. So, um, I color me interested in that, dude. That would uh, that would definitely definitely be be pretty cool to watch. That'd be wild. I, you know what? I should give them a call and see if we can't bring our car with us. Yeah, I guarantee you they're not going to turn you down. <laughs> Fans would go nuts. So different, <laughs> right? Uh, borrow borrow one of those steel ramps or Robbie Gordon's and throw it out there too. Just send it, Steve. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would be interesting. Well, we did race rally cross there. We, we we launched it pretty much halfway down the back straightaway, so that would kind of bring back some old memories. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, all this is going on. Obviously, we've got that event going. I know we talked a bit on rally cross. You had said, uh, I know you and I both know at some point here in the next day or so, uh, the new nitro uh, nitro rally cross schedule is coming out. I know that's going to be a fall series this year. That's got to have you pretty excited to get back to rally cross racing because it's by the the time that starts it's almost going to be almost a full two years since we've actually had rally cross racing here in the states man two years minus one week it's since our since our last race at mid-ohio october 4th and 5th 2019 so so yeah everything's looking to launch back up everyone at nitro has been working so hard behind the scenes uh trying to trying to navigate the the best way forward uh, with this whole COVID situation and everything, but honestly, they've done a great job. Uh, I know there's a lot of criticism behind the scenes on uh, on getting things going and everything, but when 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 you got so many places locked down and so many places where you got to be so mindful of the situation, they've they've genuinely done a good job in taking everything into consideration, and especially trying to to make things so it's so it's capable of of getting European teams over here 
uh, from the WRX series and everything, or what was the WRX series over here to be able to compete in Nitro Rallycross. They, they've done a, a spectacular job and all that. Um, I think what you're going to see is something that we've all been pushing for for years is, is getting some consolidation uh, of these multiple Rallycross series around the world and getting these, these teams all running under the same umbrella and against each other rather than separate series. And I, I think we finally got a solution for that. And this thing's going to take off. Like we've got new tracks being built across the country. Um, 2022 is going to be an even bigger series yet, getting back to more events than we ever had. And even in the, the hype of, or the height of, of GRC's popularity, uh, 2022 is going to start out with more events than, than they actually had or event weekends, I should say. And it, it's going to be awesome. Like it's awesome TV package, awesome promotional package, uh, awesome venues going back to some big cities, uh, stuff like that. So, and just take, obviously it's a Travis Pastrana brainchild, right? So you just take the, the extremeness of what Travis always wants to do and then just couple that up with everything the, the his team at Nitro has built behind the scenes. It's a, it's a pretty cool opportunity to just be a part of it. Yeah, Trav always, uh, you know, I, I think he's been a great torchbearer for, for Rallycross and, and thinking out of the box, and he's seen the failures of Rallycross, and, and you have as well, and I know you've been, you know, working with him for quite a bit the last couple of years, and I, I think it's really kind of cool to be able to put together a series that I think really is going to have some legs long term and, and give us the stability that we all want with uh, Rallycross here in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely, and I'll tell you what, it's been it's been a – it's one of those things where you just good things come in time, right? So it's been a long time coming, but uh, I promise you once this thing all gets rolling, the wait will have been well worth it. Well, Steve, it is always fun catching up, buddy. We are up against the time break. I think you and I could talk for a while, but, uh, man, always fun catching up, buddy. <laughs> that time break always comes in perfect right before we get ourselves in trouble, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of the stuff we've got to talk about we probably can't do on air. So that's over drinks, <laughs> that's a, over drinks after you take a win at Bristol, buddy. Let's do it. And we'll be back after this on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. From the 2018 Master Distillers of the Year comes a bold new American whiskey in fistful of bourbon. Their whiskeys have been award-winning for generations. Now they're going all in on bourbon, blending five straight whiskeys to create a big balanced bourbon that stands apart from everything else. So grab yourself a fistful of bourbon blend of five bourbons created with over a hundred years of whiskey blending experience. It ain't just a bourbon, it's a damn fistful. Please enjoy responsibly. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90 degree flood to a 15 degree spot based on your vehicle speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Well, that's all we got here for hour number one here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. But uh, you are in luck. We got hour number two coming at you. Yes, a whole other hour of the show. And we got two more massive guests. We got my good friend and Polaris Razor teammate, Mitch Guthrie Jr. Going to be talking Dakar, his win this past weekend, and King of the Hammers. Man, this kid has been busy to kick off 2021, and we're going to have Mitchie right here on the show to catch up. We also got Supercross rider Max Anstey. He is going to be on the show as well. We're going to catch up with him, talking about moving to uh, the U.S. from Europe and uh, how the motocross scene is different here than it is across the pond. So a couple of blue chippers, a couple of bangers coming at you, hour number two. Got any guest questions? Hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on both Instagram and the Twitter machine. You have to hit those DMs up, though, on uh, on IG if you want those questions answered. But uh, we will get them in the show best we can. And, uh, yes, do want to uh, mention before we sign off on our number one, don't forget, need some help below the we- below the belt. Our good friends at Manscaped can help you out. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping, Manscaped.com, using the code Jim Beaver. Trust me, you will thank me.
So, uh, yes, Manscaped, big partner in the show. But uh, we've got a whole lot more to go right here on the show. we got a massive hour number two with Mitch Guthrie Jr. and Max Anstey coming up. So don't go anywhere, and we'll be back right after this short break here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome to hour number two of the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I uh, do want to give a shout out to our podcast listeners. Yes, those of you not tuning in nationally or on Sirius XM, um, please, when you get a chance, head over to uh, Podcast One. And uh, check us out over there. But uh, also, Apple Podcasts. Please go to Apple Podcasts and please leave a rating or review and subscribe. It helps us out. No matter where you listen, please go to uh, Apple Podcasts and hit us up there. Uh, definitely helps us out a ton. And uh, leave rating, review, all that good stuff. And uh, let everybody know that uh, you listen to the show. So, uh, yes, thanks to all of you. Um, did uh, get some interesting news from social media during uh, the break. I guess we'll open with that. But uh, the Ford Bronco, yes, this thing called the Ford Bronco. We've been hearing about it for years, right? Worst kept secret of all time, 20-year tease from Ford Motor Company. Sounds like the end of March, they are actually going to start job one. For those of you not in the auto industry, job one means they're actually building Broncos for consumers. Yes, the pre-orders, they're going to start getting shipped out. The, uh, probably the start of April. I would say you're going to start seeing them at dealers by the end of April. This is massively good news for uh, for those of you like me that have a Bronco pre-order. Does that mean uh, we're going to get some of the first ones? Eh, I don't know. I can't uh, promise you that. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of constraints and things like that on those. And I guess there's some of the options that they're not going to uh, build right away because uh, they, they're going to be slow to build. But Broncos, we might actually see those sometime the first half of this year, and that has me excited. Should have you excited if you're an off-road fan or a Ford fan? Yes, you should be excited. The Bronco, (laughs) it is for real. Finally, you know. Uh, We've seen them at uh, all these car shows and everything else, and now you're going to actually be able to uh, see one, drive one, and buy one. Yes. Um, I'm excited. I, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with my Ford Bronco build quite yet, though. That's that's the biggest thing. We're definitely going to do a build, but uh, I don't know quite um, 
who, what, when, where, why, how we're going to build it, how deep we're going to go on this thing. But, uh, yeah, think of bumper, winch, rigid lights, vision wheels, some really tall general tires. Uh, definitely need to get some, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know, probably a vinyl wrap going on of some sort. It's going to be awesome. But, uh, yeah, Ford Bronco heading towards production finally. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to take a short commercial break. we got a big hour number two with Mac, Max Anstey and Mitch Guthrie Jr. right here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. More after this break. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. From the 2018 Master Distillers of the Year comes a bold new American whiskey and fistful of bourbon. Their whiskeys have been award-winning for generations. Now they're going all in on bourbon, blending five straight whiskeys to create a big balanced bourbon that stands apart from everything else. So grab yourself a fistful of bourbon, a blend of five bourbons created with over 100 years of whiskey blending experience. It ain't just a bourbon, it's a damn fistful. Please enjoy responsibly. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount life is all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound like what you hear catch all the back episodes of the down and dirty radio show on apple podcast and be sure to rate review and subscribe Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my Polaris Razor teammate, uh, Mr. Mitch Guthrie. How is, uh, how's everything going, Mitchie? Good, good, Jim. Good to be here, and it's always a good time when we're on the show, because that means the race went well, so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, well, you've, I don't even know where the hell we start about 2021 with you, dude. I mean, uh, we got Dakar, we got King of the Hammers, we got uh, you know the race you just won. Like I guess we should probably go back to the start, but you're number two at Dakar, obviously, buddy. I know it didn't go quite the way you wanted, but uh, you know what were the biggest differences in year two from year one? Because obviously you showed speed year one, you kind of made an impact over there. Everybody kind of knew you were coming. Year number two, uh, you know, kind of take us through Dakar because I, I guess we ought to start 2021 talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Year two of Dakar definitely goes a lot better than year one. Uh, this year, it kind of didn't for us, but year one is just such a learning curve. And, and even going into year two now, um, 
the rally raid stuff, it's just so different from what, you know, we're all used to. So going there, uh, even after doing one year, it's just still such a learning curve every day. You're learning something new. And unfortunately we had some car troubles and some things go on there, but, um, so we had to call the race early, um, but stayed there to support Seth and Christina, the two other drivers and, uh, still had a good time. Uh, it's, it's so cool going out there and, and seeing, you know, such a different type of motorsport. you know, we're, we're so used to what we do out here with desert racing, short course, all that stuff. So, um, one thing I have so much fun doing is going out there and, you know, it's such a learning experience, like I said. So um, that's the biggest takeaway I get every time I'm out there racing. Yeah. Well, and how was your two, like you approach this, obviously last year, uh, I got a feeling like a lot of people were questioning, like who the hell is this American kid that Red Bull's throwing in this car? Like, what's he doing here? Then you go out and you actually win some stages. And everyone's like, Oh, He's for real. I got to feel like the reception for you going year number two was probably a whole hell of a lot different than it was last year. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think for everyone, they, they knew that we were coming and, and we have a good, we have an amazing team, all the mechanics, all, all of our partners. Um, the OT3 program is awesome. And, and to get a chance, chance like I have to go race Dakar and some other events is, is seriously so amazing. And I'm super thankful and, um yeah i know this year when we went into it people definitely we had some more eyes on us because they knew that we were there to win and that was our plan and i mean even coming down to before the race we were in dubai for an entire month uh testing the car came home for about five or six days and left on christmas christmas day and went back out there uh for the race and you know we had our ups and downs um but overall you know, sometimes there's things out there in racing that you, you can't plan for and, and things that can happen to the car. And unfortunately, those things happen. But I mean, like I said, it was such a big learning experience. And we, we plan on being back next year and doing more rally raid stuff. And, um, you know, we'll get it all figured out. But thankfully, I'm, I have this opportunity to be able to learn so much. And it takes a while for sure. There's guys that have been doing it for, you know, 30 years, guys like Carlos Sainz and uh, Stefan Petterhans, all of those guys. So we we have some time to catch up to them for sure. Well, and I think too, like you know, I, I think a lot of Americans don't realize, like you know, when you have something like Dakar, I mean, this is a year long preparation. Like you know, it's over. Your team, you guys, you're already forward looking at next year. This isn't something like midsummer you pick up. Oh, I guess we better start getting ready for Dakar. I mean, this is something like as soon as Dakar wraps, immediately it's like flip the switch to the falling year, and it's like 12 months of prep to get to uh, to get to Dakar the next year. And I think a lot of people don't realize like just the massive time investment. I mean, I know you, you know, a little bit personally, and we're texting back and forth on some other stuff. And like you're overseas, you're, you know what I mean? You're you're you know you're flying all over the globe for this program you know in preparation to actually go to that car you know yeah yeah definitely it's it's uh it, it's crazy you know the way my life's been going lately and i'm so thankful but yeah the car is it's it's a crazy experience and just getting to the race is one thing um unfortunately due to covid last year we we had plenty of plans to do a lot more rally raid you know there's stuff like silkway rally abu dhabi all these different ones and we did Andalusia rally in Spain um, a bit before Dakar, you know, as testing and, you know, just to get back back with the team, which was great. But, yeah, a lot, a lot of the times even we're doing secret projects and things and we're overseas and people don't even really know. Um, and that's one thing that's crazy about that race is the amount of time, like you said, that goes into it. And, you know, you're even doing different races like, you know, Andalusia rally. You're going all the way out to Spain and that. Um, you know, really is dedicated to testing for, for Dakar. And that's what most teams do. So you spend all year getting ready as well as doing other races to prepare for Dakar, um, which is pretty crazy, you know, to have 12 months of, of stuff lined up in your schedule. And, you know, overall it's, it's for that one month in, in uh, January to, to go win, win that race. Yeah. What the, what's the biggest difference in driving that car and say your desert car you run here in best in the desert, Mitch? Yeah, uh, I get asked this one a lot, and people, you know, ask me to compare the two, and there's there's really no comparison. Um, there are two cars that are completely built for different purposes. Um, the OT3 is, you know, specifically built for rally rate. It's completely different, different motor, different, 
it doesn't have one part on that car that's the same as what I drive out here. Um, you know, the biggest thing out there in Dakar is the rules are a bit more specific. So, you know, we only run 30 inch tires. We have less wheel travel. Um, the cars are built super lightweight, um, to try and get as much, you know, speed out of them as we possibly can. They're restricted. So we have a bit less horsepower than we do out here. Um, and you know, lots of things like that, but you know, the terrain out there, a lot of times isn't quite as rough. You have a, you know, usually in that two week time frame of, of Dakar, you have about half of it is dunes and half of it is, uh, you know, super rough terrain, a lot like out here, but you don't see, you know, the whoops and things like that. Just, you know, maybe some random G outs and things. Um, but it's super rocky, super gnarly out there. Some of the stuff you see is a lot like, you know, King of the Hammers because you don't have a trail sometimes and you're out in the middle of nowhere and the, the cap heading is taking you through this giant field of rocks and that's just the way you have to go. So, uh, and then you come out here and our desert cars, you know, we have a, a bit more power, bigger tires, more suspension um, due to, you know, the terrain we're going through. So definitely huge differences between the two. Yeah. Well, you know, talking about that, you mentioned King of the Hammers. So you land home from Dakar and immediately it's like all hands on deck because in two weeks you got, you know, one of the biggest off-road races of the year in King of the Hammers. I mean, take me through that process. Cause obviously, you know, you got guys back at the shop, you know, and, and they're working on things and it's not only your car, but you got your dad's car as well. Cause he still does hammers and he's still one of the top guys at hammers. So it's like you land home and it's like, you know, probably thrown back to the wolves, right? Yeah. Yeah. There is definitely no time to spare. So, I mean, Dakar was about a two month process, pretty, pretty much two months of being gone from home. And, you know, as soon as we landed, I took, you know, one day off and then we were back in the shop getting ready for King of the Hammers. Um, and thankfully, you know, I, I have my dad and, and Curtis, my co-driver, uh, we're back home the whole time getting things ready and, and prepping the cars, but we still had a lot of work to do. Um, and, you know, a lot of people think we have this huge team and all, all this stuff, but, but we really don't, you know, thankfully we have family and friends and have my dad and Curtis that are able to take care of things while I'm gone, but um, definitely had a lot of work to do. It was, uh, it was a long couple of weeks, you know, no matter what, if you're preparing for King of the Hammers, however long before the race, it, it doesn't matter because you're still going to be getting ready, you know, the days before the race. Um, but thankfully we, we showed up and, we were feeling really good with the cars that we had built and, um, you know, we, we were ready. Yeah. Well, and take us through hammers this year. Cause I know new car, obviously, you know, you, you, you know, you didn't get the result you wanted and you and your dad, I mean, you guys are the Kings of King of the hammers as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? The Guthrie's in the UTV division. You guys know you're, you're marked, you know, you guys are gunning for you. I mean, this was uh, it was a little bit different pace this year being out there. I mean, this was a very, very fast KOH UTV race, probably, I mean, this had to have been the fastest one in history. Because, I mean, what was it, just a little bit over four hours and the finishers were coming in, man? Yeah, yeah. This year, uh, everyone thought it was going to be, you know, the, the, the Ultra 4 guys thought it was going to be a lot tougher for us than it was. And, I mean, we, we got there and we're feeling good, like you said. I mean, we, we won it, you know, plenty of times and we know what it takes. And we did our homework, did our pre-running. And, I mean, I went into race day feeling – better than I have in a few years, you know, I, I felt ready. I had, uh, Oren co-riding with me who co-rides with Bryce. Um, and then he, he got, uh, my first win with me. He was my co-rider and King of the Hammers. So we were feeling good, but yeah, I mean, it was one of those races. It was a super fast one that the desert was absolutely tore up because the trophy trucks raced before us. Um, and then the rocks, they weren't too bad, actually. We, we did all the rock trails the day before the race, me and Oren, and um, had them dialed and pretty much came down to we were on our own pretty much the whole time in the rocks. So it's, it's always uh, hard to find that pace when you're kind of by yourself. And I was honestly expecting some more cars to break. And we came into the finish line seventh, which, you know, anyone – Anyone who knows King of the Hammers, you only care about the winner there. So, unfortunately, we didn't win at that time. But um, sometimes that's how it goes. You know, we, we planned on more people breaking and kind of finding our pace. But the, the pace was quick out there, and, and we just we weren't right there at the end. And we'll be back with more with Mitch after this break. Conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood 
to a 15 degree spot based on your vehicle speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right, Jim Beaver here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor with my Polaris Razor teammate and good friend Mitch Guthrie, Jr., uh, Mitchy, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, 2021 so far and the big year you've had and uh, obviously talking uh, a little bit about King of the Hammers. So I think uh, we'll, we'll continue on with uh, with a the KOH theme of things. Yeah, does it make you a little bit nervous that the pace was so quick? Everybody came in and, and it was between 12 and 1 when the leaders were in, a little over four hours. Does it make you a little bit nervous about next year where Dave and everybody at Ultra 4 is going to be like, ah, oh, we, we can't have that. we we got to make this thing like brutally tough. I, I hope they do that. Um, I was a little bummed out this year when we pulled into the finish line. It, it was actually a really easy day for us. And like I said, we just weren't quite there with the, the correct pace and the rocks to gain time or, or, or what it, whatever it was. But we got to the finish line. And I was like, man, this is kind of was a weird year. You know, it was, we, we actually got back and I mean, my, my Polaris razor was like in perfect shape still like i was saying man i wish there was one more lap so we could really really have a go at it because we finished so early and it definitely is weird to have probably i think it was about 50 cars finish the race and you know back in the day it would be i think one year when i was with my dad it was my dad and uh john crowley finished behind us uh, in second place and that was it we used up the entire um time allotted to finish the race which is like eight or nine hours so yeah the cars the cars are evolving and the, the course has to evolve with it so I, I hope next year they give us a really tough one because uh this year i mean we were so confident the cars held together so well and we knew we could have kept going and, and plenty of other people are coming in you know hanging on by a thread so that'll be a help for us next year yeah well i guess the good news is is so the car was in good shape leaving hammers, and then you guys have the crazy idea. We're going to turn this thing into a desert build in like two weeks. So how did that all happen, man? Because, you know, that thing rushed over to Lone Star. You guys built it into a desert car in like a handful of days. I mean, this is like a wild story leading up to the race that you just won this past weekend, man. But you got to take me through this because that had to have been all hands on deck to make that deal happen. Oh yeah, it was it was wild. Um, this year we didn't really have a, a specific plan on what I was racing, you know, because international racing uh, we have that, and it was really, it's been really tough to plan stuff. So uh, we weren't really even re- planning on running Parker, and then we decided to we hit up the guys at Lone Star, and they were like, you know, let's get it done. And so we actually dropped the car off on Monday before the race. Um, worked nonstop. We stayed out in Arizona and, and thankfully the guys at Lone Star were killer and, and got it done. And we left Lone Star Thursday night, uh, about nine or 10 o'clock, went to uh, my parents' house in Blythe and tested the car Friday, got about 40, 50 miles on it, went to tech at about five o'clock right before it closed, registered for the race, got the car tech, finished it the morning of the of the race on Saturday morning, I uh, got all the final stuff done and literally basically a minute before I got in the car to go drive to the start line is when we had every single thing fully done. And I was finally in the car feeling like, okay, we are ready for this thing. But then we were starting in the back, which wasn't ideal for us. Yeah. You were like, I don't know, 50 something position that lap one. I mean, I actually, as a crow flies, didn't start far behind you. You know what I mean? Because you were all the way back there, and I was kind of in the mid-pack of Unlimited. But 
Dude, that first lap, it, I know for me it was blinding. I mean, it was just a lot of dust, and you're just charging through and, and hoping for the best at times. I mean, I, there's a couple times where boulders are there, and you're like, oh, here's a boulder, and you're just lucky that your tires weren't in the rut or something like that. But, I mean, that that first lap, you probably had to have not seen a whole hell of a lot of the course, man. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a wild race. You know, we went into it with uh, all the cards not really in our favor. Um, but once I got going, I was like, man, this thing, I, I had a really good feeling, um, even though this position we were in. And we showed up with that car, and I was like, man, this thing is going to be fast. I know it. So we got going and started picking off cars, and, and we knew plenty of cars would break and all that good stuff. So we just, you know, did a good pace. And by lap two, man, we had gotten by most of the field and then it was like all right now i got some clean air and can really push so uh yeah lap one and two it was i didn't really see much of the course up until lap three but once once we were able to um really hold her wide open it, you know we were gaining time gaining time and i didn't really know where we were at but eventually our our guys in the in the pits are really on top of it and they let us know about where we were um and that we were contending for the lead. And I, I, you know, I told Curtis in the, in the passenger seat, you know, like, let's, let's win this thing. Let's do it. And, you know, it, it all worked out. It was one of those ones where um, all the cards played right. And we, we drove as fast as we could and kept the car together. And um, yeah, it feels good to come to the finish line and, and figure out that we won the thing. Yeah. So now you got what a conundrum, right? You weren't planning on doing the whole championship. Now you're the points leader, right? Do you almost feel like you got to go to the next one at Laughlin just to roll the dice and see what happens? Oh yeah. You're going to see me. You're going to see me at the rest of them now. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, you know, it's, we, we kind of have been playing this, this year by, uh, by ear and for us to win the first one now we're points leaders and uh, feels good. And I had a great time and I know that that car's fast. So um, you'll you'll see us at Laughlin for sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about your car too, because I think you know there's been a few guys kind of go to this Pro XP chassis, and um, you know, and I know Piplick was one of the first ones. He ran last year. He uh, you know kind of had that big statement win at the UTV World Championship last year, and then I think it opened a lot of people's eyes. Like, hey, this platform, you know, everybody's used to kind of the stretched out four seaters, and you know, in come you and this other one, and now you know within a few months we've seen Pro XPs take you know take two marquee wins you know and and you know i i think a lot of people kind of question it because the the wheelbase is different it's not a two seat it's not a four seat it, it's kind of right in the middle but do you feel like now i mean you know the proof's there in the in the results right two two marquee wins for this chassis or or this platform you know and, and two events i mean what do you what are you thinking about the future you think this you know you're going to see a migration from four seats to to something more along the lines of this uh, stretch two seat chassis yeah, uh, you know, it's always, like you said, kind of a conundrum of, like, what what's it going to be? And there's there's certain races where you might want a four-seater, certain races where you might want a two-seater, and Parker definitely was a good one for a two-seater, I'd say, and, and a four-seater. So, you know, you never know. But, I mean, I think it definitely should open a lot of eyes. Uh, like you said, there's been people moving over to two-seater chassis and kind of more stock vehicles. And uh, one thing that feels good and, you know, it just really shows the Polaris – Polaris Razor platform is we went there with, you know, the King of the Hammers car, which was turned into a best of desert car, which I mean, it, it's pretty damn stock. So, you know, we put long tra Lone Star long travel on it. We put a fuel cell in it, uh, moved a radiator to the back, but I mean, the thing is probably one of the most bone stock cars that's out there and to, to win the, you know, pro turbo class, which is one of the biggest ones is, is definitely a statement for Polaris and what kind of what kind of vehicle they have to be able to go out there with a one of the most stock vehicles out there and, and win that class is is a statement for sure for them. Yeah. So uh, you know, obviously we got a little over a month, month and a half before we go to uh, to Laughlin. Uh, I guess finally you can probably catch us on some sleep, right? I mean, we're a month and a half into the new year, and I think you probably haven't slept much until now, right? Yeah, yeah, we've we've we found some time to sleep, but uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to have a little break. But um, you know, we're gonna probably take the car to Lone Star and have them do some little updates on some things that we want changed, and and to really make the car 100% how we want it because we obviously only had about four days. But uh, other than that, yeah, you know, finally take some time to clean up the shop and unload all the vehicles and the chase trucks and really be be prepared for the rest of the year. So. Uh, you know, there's times like this that happen where you're nonstop and then finally have a 
a second to readjust and and get everything ready for the next races and, and and get back to it. But I mean, for us, it's it's pretty much nonstop at all times. There's always something we got going on and that we're we're up to and getting another race we're getting ready for. So um, you know, just kind of back at it, and you know, now we're going to be even more hungry for more wins. Well, Mitch, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, call into the show, buddy. Congrats on the win, and uh, we'll see you off in a few weeks, man. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it as always. Well, thanks a lot, Mitchie. And, uh, yeah, you know, as he signs off, I, I do got to say, you know, I, I've known the Guthrie family. His dad's a badass. His dad is, uh, you know, one of the all-time kings of UTVs at, uh, at King of the Hammers, um, one of the most decorated UTV drivers of all time at KOH. Mitchie, uh, you know, close second to his old man. Uh, between the Guthries, they pretty much owned it, uh, you know, and Mitch is a co-driver with his dad. He's done phenomenal things. So, uh, I mean, KOH is definitely a, a big deal and part of the Guthrie family, but I, I've known this kid for a long time. I've been interviewing him since, uh, you know, he really hasn't, you know, before he even accomplished pretty much anything, you know, back when he was doing work stuff and, and things like that. He transitioned into the desert. I remember when he got his first kind of big players contract, things like that, but you, know, you want to talk about a kid who, I mean, at a young age, you look at the mid 400 wins, the best in the desert championships, the UTV World Championships. He's been at Dakar in one stages. He's got KOH wins. Um, you know, obviously he hasn't really ventured south of the border too much, but you want to talk about a kid who's very young still and, uh, you, you know, in his young 20s who has the opportunity to be one of the all time greats in off road. That's Mitch Guthrie Jr. And, uh, you know, definitely watch this space because we're going to have a whole lot more of him over the next decade. That's for certain. And we'll be back after this right here on the General Tire Down a Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all new G Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive general tire will get you where you're going learn more at generaltire.com general tire cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012 looking to have some fun on four wheels dirtfish rally school has you covered packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high performance all-wheel drive and rear wheel drive subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at dirtfish just 30 minutes outside of seattle and snoqualmie you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high octane rush of rally on mud dirt and tarmac Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome a good friend, Max Anstey, to the line. Who, uh, Max, man, this is this is a big moment for you, buddy. I feel like we've got, this is like a couple years in the making, man. Yeah, it is. And um, no, thanks for having me on. I'm I'm really excited to be here. And and okay, it's uh, it was a bummer that I didn't I haven't raced any of the rounds up until this weekend. You know, I I, I crashed right before the season started and broke her. Uh, a piece in my back so it yeah it, it was just a a bit of a mission to get back but you know um as athletes we're just trying to get back as fast as we can and I, i'm just excited to be to be out here and um uh, yeah and, and i love orlando so it's, it's nice to be here and yeah really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season pans out and um just excited that we can even go racing you know with the whole world at the moment on on lockdown with even over in europe you know me being from england i see that there's not a lot going on so it's uh, it's awesome to be to be even able to go and race. So the Supercross guys have done a great job, and yeah, honestly, I'm I'm just super excited. Yeah, well, I guess let's let, we we got so much to talk about here in, the, in this thing, but let's go back a couple of years, you know, and and I guess let's let's obviously you've got an amazing career in Europe. You've raced here in the states before, so this is nothing new. But going back a couple of years, what made you make the decision like, hey, I want to go back. I want to race in the United States. I want to race Supercross. Did you feel like with everything you've accomplished, you know, in Europe and, and overseas and internationally, do you, did you feel like there was like a just kind of a void? Like you, there was something you, you still had finished, you know, that you hadn't done yet? Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, you know, I've been saying it to the people closest to me for, for the last few years. It was, you know, if I finished my career in Europe, I, I would always, and if I had the opportunity to come back to America, I would always regret not taking it. And, 
you know, I mean, well, I've raced the World Championship for quite a few years now, and, and, and I've had, you know, I've, I've won races, I, I've won the Motocross of Nations, I've, I've had a lot of success there, but Supercross and, and racing in America was something that I always did when I was a kid and, and always wanted to do. It, it's what you look up to when you're a, a young kid, um, looking in the magazines, looking on the internet, looking on whatever, you're, you're watching videos of Jeremy McGrath and James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael riding under the lights of Supercross. So I, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to come back with my team, Twisted T, HEP Suzuki. They gave me the chance to, to be back to get back over here and we jumped at it you know me and my wife we were we were over in in belgium at the time um you know that's where we were kind of based from having to be there racing the, over in the world championship and we just packed up all our, our things again and 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 headed on a plane over, over to america so uh, yeah honestly it was just one of those things where i felt like i'd regret it if i didn't if i didn't take the opportunity and, and i had the chance and it's not easy, you know. Supercross is is completely different from the outdoor stuff. So there's not many European riders that can ride Supercross. I was just lucky enough at a young age. I I was I was pretty good at it. I raced over here when I was 16, um, and then since then I just got deals and opportunities and and stuff over in Europe. And it was like, ah, you know, I, I kind of grew up doing this, so I'm I'm just happy to be back and um, yeah, and to be able to do what I love to do. Yeah, and I and I guess that's probably one of the big things is a lot of riders in Europe, I'm sure, want to come to the United States and race. I mean, there's a lot of riders in the United States that want to go to Europe and race. But, you know, when you're there and you're in front of the same people and the same teams, it's a lot – I don't want to say easier to get a ride because it's never yeah, easy to get a yeah, ride. But, but to, to make that jump across overseas, it makes it that much harder because you're not in front of those people on a weekly basis, you know, and – that had to have been really difficult. Just because you wanted to come back to the states didn't didn't mean there was going to be that door open, you know. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that want to want to go to America, and, and but the thing is, it's it's the like you say, as soon as you leave, you're forgotten. Not I would say forgotten about, but there's there's a hell of a lot of young kids that are coming up that are ready to just jump in. It's easier. It's it's easier to take someone that's already here than someone that's got to move halfway around the world to set themselves up. And, and it's also like to compete at any high level of any sport, you've got to be comfortable and you've, you're even just down to living. Like you've got, to, you've got to be able to know what gyms you're going to, what doctors you're going to use, what chiropractors, what physiotherapists, all this stuff. And, and it, it was a change that would scare a lot of people because over in, in Europe, I had everything dialed in. Like I had, I had everything there to go and do the job, but it, it like you said, it, it's just one of those where deep down I, I knew I'd regret it. So I I pushed to to, to make it happen. And honestly, I, I, I was it was a funny story because my wife and I actually um, came to America to get married. She wanted a, a, a summer wedding, a, a nice weather wedding, whereas in Europe at the end of the season in October, it's never very nice weather. So we, we were out here and I was working on deals in Europe. But then, then my team now, the Twisted Tea team, they... They called me and said, look, come and test the bike. Come and ride Supercross. Let's see let's see what you got. And I looked on the map, and it was an hour away from where we were. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to do some testing. And um, I jumped on the bike, jumped on the Supercross track for the first time in, in many years and, and loved it and, and got on really well with the team. So that's kind of, that's kind of how it happened. Yeah, I got I to gotta ask. All this is going on. You're here to get married, and all of a sudden, you find yourself on a Supercross bike. I mean, was your wife was your wife really thrilled about that? <laughs> it was literally two days before, as well. It was <laughs> two, two days, days before, before, the, before wedding. the wedding. So uh, I, I was like, ah. but no. I mean, I'm lucky. My my wife my wife supports it, and she she loves America too. So it's um it's something that you know we we sacrifice our life to to go and perform at a high level each week whether we're racing the world championship or or in america and you know i uh, yeah it's just something that i was lucky we both wanted to do and and she was actually she was actually supportive and happy about it and and it all went well so yeah not, nothing to complain about we're, we're here now right <laughs> yeah uh better or worse right better or worse but uh uh, you know yeah, that. Be- exactly. <laughs> you know that being said, so this still gets inked for last year for 2020, man. I, I, the last, I would say, what 15, 16 months, man. They ha- had to have been an emotional roller coaster for you because you finally get this ride. You're back in the states, get injured, 
missed last year's Supercross season. COVID hits. The world kind of comes yeah. and crumbles. You're all ready to go for 2021. Injury hits again. Like, how are you doing, man? Because you've ridden a roller coaster like nobody else the past year and a half. Yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds it sounds bad with the injuries, but honestly, I don't normally. I don't crash normally. It was like I'm I'm pretty touch wood, pretty solid on on the track, and and it just seems like yeah, when I do hit the deck, it's a big one. Um, but no, it, it, I mean to be honest, the Achilles injury that I had last year which sat me out of Supercross. At the time, it was obviously a, a massive bummer, but in a way, it allowed me to sort everything out, like get comfortable here, be able to go to the races but not ride, but get a feel for everything yeah. again, kind of get myself going and then be be strong and solid for outdoors. And, and I performed well in, in the American Outdoor Series last year and, and really put my team on the map and, and showed that the... Suzuki, the bike is is competitive with the best bikes out there. And then preparing for for this Supercross season, I, I, we honestly did did a great job testing. And and it was literally the day before the day before I was getting on a plane to fly to Houston, um, I ended up crashing. At that time, it's a bit of a grey area, but through no fault of my own. And then and then ended up having to un you know I, it's not the end of the world. I've I've missed. It's been five weeks now, um, but okay, the, the the reason why it was such a or a bigger blow was because they were doing three races in a week. You know, the first two weeks of racing, they did six six races. Whereas in a normal situation, I, I would have only missed four, four or so races. So it wouldn't have been too bad. But um, it is what it is. You know, I'm just happy that I, I'm going to get to go and do these last 10 or 9 or 10 or however many rounds are left and, and then look forward to outdoors again and, uh, you know, go and put my best foot forward yeah well you know and obviously you're, you're going to be doing a lot of learning you know in supercross this year i know obviously you know you, you missed first couple rounds so you know i gotta assume you know you, you guys are collecting data you're learning you know obviously you want some good results yeah. but it's got to have you pretty excited for outdoors because you know you, you did have a pretty good year last year you've you know the tracks now you've got that knowledge i mean you got to feel really strong heading into outdoors this year yeah and to be honest that's kind of where Obviously, I love Supercross. My head's at, I need to learn Supercross. And I, I've only done two days of riding before heading into this weekend. Like, it's, it's, I'm pretty rushed now just because of the injury. But again, you know, life's not perfect. You've got to make the best of the situation. So I'm going to progress at each round and get better and better and better. And then, and then yeah, I want to go into the outdoors. I know what to expect. I know my settings that worked from last year. And for sure, I, I'm going to be competitive right up the sharp end in, in in outdoors and i do feel like we've made improvements from there last year so yeah there's going to be a lot to learn it's different it's first time for me racing a 450 in supercross um but honestly i i'm just really happy to be given the opportunity and happy to be here. you know i i've got a smile on my face i i love it so i um get to do what i've always wanted to do well, here's a question. I mean, you've raced, you know, at, at the top level in both Europe and here in the United States. What's uh, what's the biggest differences in the two competition wise? Um, so in Europe, the traveling is a lot, a lot more difficult. So it's you know, we, I mean, I say Europe, but we'll go to Argentina, we'll yeah. go to Indonesia, we'd go to Thailand, we'd go to Qatar. Um, there was even a round in China last year in 2019 or whatever. So it's 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 very um, the traveling and just simple things like food is a uh, is a big is a big part of it in Europe. So the planning on that side is is a lot more difficult over there. Whereas here, the nice part is you can fly all the way across America and you've still got a Whole Foods or you've still got a Target or you've still got a, yeah. a you know, a, a normal restaurant to go to or to get your normal food. Um, so that's one of the, the big advantages of being in America. But honestly, as far as it goes competition wise, obviously like it's different supercross to, to in Europe or in the world championship, the, the focus is on, on the motocross side of things. But the top guys over in Europe train and work super hard and the top guys in america train and work super hard and they're, and they're both at the top level of their game and they are at the pinnacle of of their sport the european guys are are amazing at what they do and the americans are amazing at what they do in with supercross so i honestly don't feel like i mean with any sport 
it it takes a lot of a lot of work and dedication to do your thing and and i i feel like the way that the top guys in america and top guys in europe are it's it's similar they're just working at slightly different crafts you know you're you're working at a slightly different skill set for supercross than you are for outdoors but yeah it's it's similar to be honest yeah any uh, any specific rounds you're uh, looking forward to uh with the rest of this calendar um, Daytona, I mean, that's yeah. always been one I, I watched on TV and thought oh, that is such a cool place. Um, those new three Atlanta rounds look kind of cool with outdoor kind of set up weird, different for everyone, which, which is going to be good for me. I mean, yeah, it's still, it's still different for all the other guys too. So, um, so yeah, that, those, those ones I'm, but honestly, just all of them, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of them. I, I think it's just going to be nice to get get out there and, and figure it out yeah you feel like something like daytona where it's a little bit longer of a track uh you know you feel like uh it, it's got it's always traditionally had maybe a little bit more motocross feel i mean it's still very much supercross but do you feel like something like that maybe you might have a little bit of an edge just because out, outdoors you know you run so strong at yeah i i think for my first first like time yes i do think it's gonna be better but again i could be completely wrong <laughs> um, but i you know I, I also know that it's not easy to set the bike up there you've got to have a bit of experience so um i am looking forward to that one i originally was going to plan to come back at, at that race um from this injury because that had given me another two weeks but i did a couple of days and i didn't feel too bad so i got on a plane and came out here so it's i i i'm i think daytona would be will be a, a nice one for me because i think i'll be more like i'll have more laps under my belt um but again honestly it it looks awesome on tv um and daytona is is a famous place you know daytona is daytona so um yeah. i think that'll be cool well max uh, we're up against the time break my friend but uh, i appreciate you uh taking the time to come on i know i will uh, i'll be out at the arlington texas round so hopefully uh, we can link up i guess in person uh uh, out there in Texas. That'd man. be awesome. Yeah, that would be great. No, thank you. And um, and I look forward to, to meeting you there. All right, sounds good. Take care, and uh, we'll be tuning in on TV this weekend. Cheers, mate. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. And we'll be back to wrap things up right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, I guess it's that time that we sign off. But, man, what a great show. Steve Arpin, Max Anstey, Mitch Guthrie Jr. is our guest. Uh, big thanks to them. I know next week sounds like we're going to have a hot off-road heavy show. I think we've got uh, Polaris Engineer and a uh, guy that just um, did a phenomenal job up there doing some ice racing. Uh, Andy Ives is going to be on the show. we got uh, Jeff Phillips from Best in the Desert. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll try and pull in an HRA or an IndyCar guest, something like that, to uh, offset the dirt heavy side of things. But, uh, yeah, lots going on here. Thank you guys once again. Big thanks to all our amazing partners, uh, General Tire, Polaris Razor, Vision Wheel, Rigid Industry, Industries, uh, Fistful of Bourbon, Dirtfish, Optimus, GSP XTV, Axles, iRacing. Don't forget uh, coupon code over there at, uh, <laughs> excuse me, at Dirtfish is Jim Beaver 15. And if you're looking for one there at Manscaped, it's manscaped.com. Jim Beaver, that'll get you 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. 
I am at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. I love hearing feedback. Hit me up, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, DM me. Let me know guest suggestions. Our new website's getting ready to launch. You can use the contact form there as well. But, man, we've got uh, lots of big stuff. Go and check out my social media feed. We've got a ton of content. We've been dropping from the races, videos. We've got helicopter footage coming. Man, we are a media powerhouse in the next couple of weeks on social. So, especially on Instagram and Facebook, you definitely want to be locked and loaded there because uh, it is uh, good good stuff to come uh also i'm gonna be on site at supercross in texas dallas super tuesday make sure and uh, hit me up uh if you guys are gonna be out there dallas texas listeners let me know i'd love to meet you guys in the flesh uh out at some supercross so yeah we're signing off for this week though you guys be safe have a great week and we'll see you next time right here on the general tire down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor 